Gary Humphreys, the man who brought us Dame Edna Everidge, has died. His comic genius and sharp wit have been praised. Australia's Prime Minister describing him as the brightest star. Also tonight, remembering Stephen Lawrence, but 30 years on, his family and friends are told the police have failed to reform. While progress may have been made, the Met remains institutionally racist. Election of the 2023 National League champions. And the dream team, Wrexham, the little side backed by Hollywood superstars, return to football's big time. This is ITV News with Rebecca Barry. Good evening. Comedians, actors and politicians have praised Barry Humphreys, the man who created the flamboyant character Dame Edna Everidge after his death, aged 89. They described him tonight as a true genius. The Australian Prime Minister said he was the brightest star. During a 70-year career, the entertainer used his extraordinary quick wit to satirise members of the public and celebrities alike. Joe Coshen looks back at his colourful life. The vibrant dresses and the iconic violet wig. Dame Edna Everidge, the global superstar alter ego of Barry Humphreys, entertained millions with her mischievous and unpredictable quick wit on screen and stage for over 70 years. Because you were transplanted from where your home into the University of Oxford. That's quite right. So right. your organ yeah. scholarship, it was really yes. an organ transplant yeah. in a way. <laughs> Much like the guest list at Everidge Towers, a host of star-studded names led the tributes to the everlasting Australian entertainer. Comedian Rob Brydon was one of several friends to visit Barry in hospital. He said just three days ago he was making him laugh. His talent shone until the very end. I had gone to the hospital in Sydney to cheer him up, but actually I came up with him having cheered me up with all his stories and, and his humour and uh, just having a little go at me every now and then. You had to be on your toes uh, when Barry Humphreys was around, even when he was um, unwell. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese said through a galaxy of personas, the brightest star in that galaxy was always Barry. Another of those much-loved personas was the foul-mouthed, drunk and scruffy Celeste Patterson. Legendary talk show host Sir Michael Parkinson said he's lost a dear friend of many years. In a time when the word is bandied around far too easily, we have truly lost a genius. But you know, we've got more culture than a penicillin factory in Australia. <laughs> At every opportunity, Humphreys loved toying with his audience, no matter who it was. <laughs> they found me a better seat. I should be saying farewell to my English possums in this beautiful... No, don't be sad yet. It will be sad but there'll be a little bit of joy in it too, I hope. Barry Humphreys, who's died aged 89. The Foreign Office is tonight playing down any suggestion that British people trapped in Sudan are about to be rescued. That seems to contradict comments by the Sudanese army, who said earlier it was coordinating efforts to evacuate British diplomats and nationals as the fighting continues there. Our political correspondent Libby Vina is here, so it seems that any imminent rescue is unlikely. Well, uh, the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, chaired an emergency COBRA meeting today, attended by, among others, the Defence Secretary, Ben Wallace. But I think talk earlier in the day that there might be an evacuation has effectively uh, really was speculation that uh, isn't borne out by the facts on the ground. Government sources here are pointing out that unlike in Afghanistan back in 2021, we have no military presence on the ground. There is no 
secure air base. And obviously, the ceasefire that has been brokered, a number of ceasefires, none of them have held so far, so the security situation is still very, very difficult indeed. The advice to British nationals at the moment is to stay indoors, stay in a safe place as much as you can. But, of course, their situation is getting more perilous. There's talk of people running short of food and water. Clearly, the government would like to get them out, but at the moment it doesn't see a way of doing that. A very worrying situation there. Libby, thank you. The senseless murder of Stephen Lawrence 30 years ago today shocked Britain and led to the Metropolitan Police being labelled institutionally racist. Today, at a memorial service, his family and friends were told that three decades on, not enough had been done and institutional racism still exists. Neil Connery reports. 30 years on, Stephen Lawrence's mother, Doreen, was joined by the Labour leader and other dignitaries and supporters for this memorial service to mark the teenager's death. They remembered the A-level student who dreamed of becoming an architect, but who was murdered in a racially motivated attack. Stephen's brother, Stuart, read a message from the chaplain who held his funeral. He's quite a boy. He was a handsome boy, a clever boy, a boy full of love. His whole life reflected that, love. He was brave. 30 years on, the question is still, why did it happen? Stephen was 18 when he was set upon by a gang of white youths and stabbed to death waiting for a bus. The police investigation was hampered by racism and alleged corruption. The Met was found to be institutionally racist. It took nearly 20 years for two of his five killers to be brought to justice. Met Commissioner Sir Mark Rowley today apologised for the failings, but heard London's mayor give this assessment. Three decades on, we're not where we hoped to be. While progress may have been made, the Met remains institutionally racist. Amid the joy of remembering Stephen's life was a hunger for faster change. 30 years on from Stephen Lawrence's murder, much work remains to be done to counter the impact of racism on justice and wider society. The cry from here today was that no family should ever suffer like this again. Neil Connery, ITV News, St Martin in the Fields. Now, if your mobile phone suddenly makes a loud noise tomorrow afternoon, don't panic. It's a test for a new government alert system to be used across the UK in emergencies when lives could be in danger. Hamish Auskery reports. Training complete and fundraising well underway. Those taking part in the London Marathon tomorrow are as ready as they'll ever be. For thousands of runners, picking up their race numbers is the final piece of admin before they take on the iconic course along the River Thames tomorrow. But this year's experience will be unique. You may well still be out on the course when that national emergency signal is broadcast. The government test, if all goes to plan tomorrow, will sound like this. That will be really jarring because I will be listening to music all the way through, so it will... It will scupper it. Well, I won't hear it because I'm not taking my phone round with me. I might be all right as long as I'm not deafened by the sound of other people's phones. Yeah, I forgot about that, to be fair. <laughs> Hopefully I would have finished the run by then and uh, I'll be recovering, having a pizza or something. The noise will be heard on smartphones across the country. The World Snooker Championship at the Crucible will be paused to avoid any untimely distractions. And in theatres, new protocols have been put in place. So when they come to see a show for the matinee tomorrow, um, they will be told, uh, very politely, to switch their phones off completely. Domestic violence charities are advising anyone with hidden devices to switch the alert off. Some, though, have questioned if the new alert system is really necessary. Well, this is another 
tool in the toolkit in order to help the government respond to emergencies and help protect people's lives. And it's very similar to what we have in Japan, United States and elsewhere. It's just a test, but in future it could be the sound that saves your life. In London, the professional runners will be well finished by the time 3pm comes around, but for any of us in a crowded place when the alert goes off, it might just be a bit of a spectacle. Hamish Ausgeri, ITV News, at the XL Centre in London. Sport and Little Wrexham Football Club are back in the big time. Tonight, the Welsh team beat Boreham Wood 3-1 with their Hollywood backers, Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney, watching in the stands. Our Wales reporter, Rhys Williams, has all the goals and all the celebrations. Back to the Football League, they go! Wrexham are back. 15 years to the day since they were relegated from the Football League. How's that for a happy ending? It is now. It drove one co-owner to tears while the other called his wife and children at home in New York. Wrexham started the game knowing only a win would guarantee them promotion, but it was the worst possible start. And he scores! The racecourse ground stunned within just 50 seconds. But Boreham Wood's lead didn't last long, Elliot Lee heading home to send the racecourse crowd wild. In the second half, the Red Dragons were struggling to break the visitors down, but big games are made for big game players. Pick that one out. Goal number 46 of the season for Wrexham's talismanic striker. And he wasn't done there. A 47th of the season for the man the Wrexham faithful call Super Paul Mullin. It's him again! For the Wrexham faithful who've endured decades of misery, it's a moment to savour. My stomach is now back in its rightful position instead of up here somewhere. Fabulous, absolutely fabulous. Incredible, a, a little bit surreal. It's felt like a long season. We've waited but, a long amazing. time for this, haven't yeah. we, Lucy? People said at the beginning, why Wrexham? Why Wrexham? This is exactly why Wrexham happening right now is why. For us to be welcomed into their community and to be welcomed into this experience has been the honour of my life. These fans have had to wait 15 long years for a return to the Football League. It's been 20 years since they could celebrate any kind of promotion. Their Hollywood owners think they can take them all the way to the Premier League. If that's the case, they took their first step here today. Chris Williams, ITV News, Wrexham. Well, they'll be celebrating long into the night, but that's it from us. The weather's next from me and the whole weekend team here. Good night. Everywhere will be lovely and warm today. You might even be tempted to go for a dip. Heinz Seriously Good Mayonnaise sponsors ITV National Weather. Hello there. Good evening to you. Hope you've had a lovely weekend so far. Now, as we head through tonight, we hold on to fairly cloudy skies. Temperatures dropping away, but it should stay frost free. Outbreaks of rain in places, particularly across southern counties of England, and the winds strengthening across the far north of Scotland, with the air turning much colder here. And that's the trend as we head through into Sunday. Temperatures will start to feel fresher for all. So much so across Scotland, we're likely to see some snowfall over high ground. It's going to be a day of sunshine and showers, but some heavy downpours out there. Definitely worth keeping your umbrella to hand. And across central and southeastern parts, those showers merging into some longer spells of rain and that cooler fresher feel continues as we head into Monday as well further scattered showers some sleet and hail across northern areas temperatures struggling 5 to 13 degrees Celsius that's below average for this time of year have a good night Heinz seriously good mayonnaise sponsors ITV national weather feels like home whatever the weather valent boilers and heat pumps Sponsors ITV London Weekend Weather. Hello there. 
Very good evening to you. Today across much of the capital, yes, we did have some mist and fog to start this morning, but there's been some welcome sunshine for all of us too before the clouds started to drift its way in from the south and the west, and it's gradually thickened up overnight tonight too. There is going to be some patchy amounts of rain, but I think by dawn tomorrow morning, for most of us, we've got drier spells, still some shallow mist and fog for one or two, but you'll notice a little change starting to take place across the far south and west of the home counties as temperatures here should all hold up between 8 and 9 degrees. Tomorrow, of course, is the London Marathon. It's going to be a bit of a soggy one, I'm afraid. Rather heavy, steady rain for a good few hours or so, particularly through the morning. Could even be the odd rumble of thunder in that as well. Through the afternoon, we do start to see it turn more showery, so there'll be some sunny spells. But still, if you get caught in one of those rather heavy showers, you'll know about it. Top temperatures with light winds just up to 14 degrees. But we see a real change to the feel of the weather as we go through the first part of the working week. We start to see this northerly flow setting in, which drags down the colder air from the Arctic. And that means the blues showing their hands across the chart once again. So, yes, there's still be some sunshine as we go through the next few days and into the start of the new working week. But I hope they'll have that woolly pulley to hand because it still feel rather chilly. Pollen's next. Valent sponsors ITV London Weekend Weather. Hello Summer, Piri sponsors ITV Pollen Count. And as for the pollen forecast, as we go through Sunday and the start of the new working week, pollen levels will fluctuate between moderate and high. We're currently in the tree pollen season with birch pollen being highest throughout. Take care.